Hello everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Rock to Your Studio and today I'm sharing with you a speed version of what I worked on on the Art Joy of Sharing channel's live stream today, which is Thursday, August 22nd. And I recently received an order from inloveartsshop.com um, of different dyes. I ordered a lot of different dyes and they provided these to me for free in exchange for making videos with them, using them in my videos. This is a bonus video. I didn't agree to make two videos. I only agreed to make one, but I wanted to make this project. You know, it's really hot here. It's over 100 degrees, and it's hard to get into the holiday spirit or think about winter or fall, but I've been needing to do that in order to um, do some things that I'm obligated to do in the future. I need to make a fall background, a winter background, different things. And so you just kind of have to force it. And it's been kind of funny. I was thinking of this project, which is kind of a holiday decoration or winter decoration, not necessarily holiday, but I had made the the di the gel prints using the Deco Arts um, traditions paints that I received. And I was making monochromatic gel prints and I was making them for this project which I had in mind which was to make a little cute light up village out of these little houses that are 3D. So I printed all these gel prints with monochromatic colors on um, cardstock. It's 80 pound weight smooth white cardstock that I printed all these on and then they've been sitting in a stack waiting for me to get th to work on this project. So I have this die, it's a house die, and I've cut several different of the the gel prints using this die. And then it's very easy, it's already set up, shows you where to fold and where to um, have the flaps so that you can glue it together. And that's what I'm doing, I'm just using different colors and I have these these fairy lights, which I got off Amazon, I will put links to all the things. I'll put links to everything so that you'll know where to find the dye, where to find the fairy lights. I think they were $6. Where to find um, a gel plate and the paints that I used and the stencils that I used. Um, I wanted to make some of my houses two-story. So I figured I could just cut like a quarter of an inch from that top line, the roof line, where... I can see the little dashed folds that are included in the die, which makes it very easy to fold. Um, that's already pre-scored pre or dashed, but I just cut a quarter inch above that and I glued a second die on top to make it a two-story house. There's other alterations you could make, um, you know, to do different things, but I just, I wanted some, I wanted some height. I wanted some, some shorter houses and some small, some taller houses that look more like um, apartment buildings. The only thing that I didn't like about it was that now I have two doors, which was kind of a funny story because recently I was in Santa Cruz, um, California, moving my son there. And there's a house there, and I'm not sure how this happened, but you drive along this road and you look up and there's a retaining wall, like a, a huge brick, you know, big bricks retaining wall two stories up and there's a house at the top that's like right lined up to it and there's a door. Now if you open that door in that house and stepped out you would fall down two stories into the street and I the only thing I can think of is that there must have been a hill with a house on it and this these are older houses there's a lot of over 100 year old houses down in that interesting downtown area of Santa Cruz and the house must have been there first and there must have been a hill and then they must have needed to make the road and so they cut the hill off to make the road but th uh, there's no easement i mean literally this house backs right up to this i mean the wall and the house are are flush with each other and the door so it's really strange it's very close to where my son's apartment is like right around the corner and every time you go by you're just like that is so weird. You wouldn't be able to build that now. They wouldn't allow you to build that. It's, you know, it's something that's from a long time ago. But yeah, 
very strange. Anyway, so as I was doing this this uh, two story um, building, with then I ended up with two doors, one on the second story, and I thought to myself very much about that weird house that's in Santa Cruz. But what I did was just turn it into an arched architectural detail on the building. I put a little um, some accent lines and then a little window little mullioned window right in that little arch makes it look like it's just part of the building no big deal no big deal at all and um, of course i use two different colors and it's cute to have the house in two different colors one story painted a different color from another one um i just i thought it was cute anyway <laughs> so then i just put glues on the flaps and fold it up together, hold it together as it's sticking down. I used tacky glue, fast drying, and I, I kind of smear it so that it's not globby and that it covers all the flap. And then because it becomes tacky very quick, quickly, it's easy to glue together. You could also use hot glue or you could use some of that, that tape that has the red pull off. Um, that tape will stick. I can't remember what it's called, score tape? Well, there is one called score tape, but it doesn't, I don't think it has the red peel off, but you know what I'm talking about. If you're a crafter, you've used, used this tape or seen it before, it's the stickiest stuff ever. It would be really great for this project because that thing would never come apart. So then as I was die cutting all of these, I saved all the little punch outs from the windows. Why did I do that? Hey, I save everything. I, <laughs> I hoard everything. But I thought to myself, they would make really cute roof shingles on top of the house to make them just a little bit more interesting, you know? Um, a different color on top. So for this, this one that's orange and yellow, reddish orange and yellow, I'm using the blue and green um, punch outs as shingles on the roof. And I realize there's not going to be enough to do both sides. So I end up taking some of the, that same paper later on. Um, I have scraps of the paper from when I die cut and uh, just cutting more and making more little pieces. But they were cute because they're kind of rounded on the edges. They really look like shingles. Uh, of course, I'm using Posca pins to um, decorate, make it more interesting, make some... Uh, contrasting colors around the windows so that they stand out better and I use some paper scraps to fill in some of the windows with uh, yellow. I fill in the doors with different colors. I, I drew some little wreaths on some of the doors. I drew some vines on the back of one of the houses. Um, just fun stuff using Posca pins. They're an acrylic paint pen, so easy to use and it dries opaque. And it comes in the same bright colors that I'm using for my village. Um, for another idea on top of, of the house, I thought it might be nice to make a contrasting roof color using just some paper. And then I took a stencil and um, stenciled over it to give it a little bit of texture. I did this on a couple of the houses. A couple of the houses, I used the little pieces to make shingles. And then on one of the houses, I used... Uh, scrap of the gel printed paper and made the roof. So all the roofs do have decoration at the end, but you won't see them all on the video because I didn't finish the entire project. In fact, I'm really not sure I'm finished with it now, but I'm finished enough to make this video. <laughs> um, I, I didn't finish all of it on the show. The show is an hour and a half long. It's over on Art Joy of Sharing. I will, of course, have a link at the iCard at the end if you'd like to watch it in real time, um, you know, some people like to watch things in real time. Other people like to watch them speed up. If you're a real time person, then you can go watch that show over on Art Drive Sharing channel. You can also see what Peg was doing while I was doing this. So this blue one, I think is probably my favorite one of all the prints. I think it's blue and black and it's a very bright color blue, I like it. And I'm putting red around the windows. And I think I make the door. I don't remember. Green, maybe. 
I don't know. Anyway, I like I like it the best. It's in the front when I finish up. They're much easier to decorate flat. So if you, your pen work should be done while it's still flat before you fold it up. Of course, I figured that out the hard way because I had to fold one up to begin with just to see what it was like. And I didn't do any decoration on it. Then I had to do it <laughs> after the fact. Yep, it has a green door. And that's the one that I ended up putting a piece of the gel printed paper as a roof. So you'll be able to see all of them at the end in the close-ups so that you can see what they all turned out like. I didn't show them all in the video. Um, now I have my base and this is made out of a piece of leftover um, kind of heavy tag board or chipboard. Uh, it's from an envelope. I get these uh, envelopes with stencils in them every month because I belong to the Stencil Girl Stencil Club. And I have a lot of these envelopes and they're a great weight for making, you know, heavier stuff. I cut it and then I scored half an inch and made kind of like a little box so that I can tuck the, the battery pack for the fairy lights underneath so it won't show. Also, all the extra bits that stick out will be underneath. So this is the base. Then I took some scraps of heavier paper. This is 140 pound watercolor paper scraps cut from something else. And I'm folding them in half and then gluing them one edge inside of the, the bottom of the house. Cause there's no flaps at the bottom. There's no bottom to it. So I'm, I'm gluing them in there so that they line up one on each side. And then I put glue on that extra flap that's sticking out as you'll see here in a minute. Sorry, I go off off the screen some of the times, but I put glue on the other flaps and then I put it down on the box over the holes that I cut. Why did I cut holes? Because I want to tuck the fairy, the fairy lights up inside of the houses so that they will be lit up. So that's how I stick them down to the base because there is no bottoms to them. There would be no other way to stick it other than to make a bottom for it. Or in this case, I just made flaps. I could have also made a little miniature box the right size that would tuck in there and that would be the bottom of the house. And if I was going to use it for something else like um, a gift box, I was saying on the show that I thought maybe three truffles would fit in there and um, maybe they would be Lindor coconut truffles <laughs> to put in the box as a little, you know, little gift um, or swag at a party. You know, people sometimes have little swag bags at a party to give a gift at a holiday party. That would be a cute gift box with some truffles in it, I think, or else maybe some diamonds, you know, that would be nice too. <laughs> so I'm getting all my <clears throat> houses glued down at the base. I didn't make them line up like soldiers. I like things cattywampus, crooked, whatever you want to call it. I think it makes it more interesting. Probably on a real street, maybe it wouldn't be so crookedy, cattywampusy, but I think it makes it more cute. <laughs> so I'm putting them all a little askew on my base. And then I will tuck the fairy strings lights. They're like wires with little LED lights on them. And I, I un, undo all of it. Then I make it a, a length that I think is appropriate. And then I fold and tuck into those holes that I cut into the base. I know this doesn't translate very well on video because it's you're constantly looking at it from the top because my camera is looking down on my desk. So these 3D things that I do on the channel translate a little bit weird on, you know, in video, but I do t tilt it up like right now so that you can see I'm tucking those wires into the houses through the hole. And then I'm adding a little masking tape just to keep the wires held down underneath. And then when you turn it on, you get a lighted up village, which I think is a door, a bowl, bright colors, um, lots of pattern with the gel printing with the stencils. And it's so cute when it's lit up. Um, 
at that point, the show was over. And then I continued to work on it a little bit. I still want to put something on on the base. It just right now has gesso, white gesso on it. I want to put maybe some, some uh, medium that looks like snow. There is a snow medium that has glitter in it. And it's kind of something that you put on with a, a palette knife. I'll probably maybe do that at some point or something. I just, I haven't quite decided what I'm going to do. Maybe just some glitter, maybe glitter. You can't, you can't go wrong with glitter, right? I don't know. I'll do that at some point, but I did finish all the roofs. I did add the trees, which you will see coming up in a minute. This scrap right here, I cut some trees out of it. I have a little tiny die cut tree, pine tree type of a die cut. This is where I just cut some more pieces to finish that roof. Um, because I, I didn't have enough of the window cutouts in the right colors. Yeah, this was a fun project. The theme today for Art Joy Sharing was play day. So this is what I played with. <laughs> I hope you're enjoying this. If you are, please remember to give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below or a question. Um, you can go and check out inloveartsshop.com if you'd like to purchase this house die that I used. Inexpensive. Um, and they work great. They're just thin dies, like thinlets, only they're just really inexpensive. And they have free shipping worldwide if you spend $25. So, yeah. That's a deal. So I'm cutting out my little pine trees with a teeny tiny pine die. I kind of wish that I could cut more than one at a time. <laughs> That's my one complaint about this manual die cutting, which is the only kind I have. I don't have, you know, a, a scan and cut or any of those machines. This is all I have is a basic die cutting machine. But I glue those on. I do go on to finish all the roofs and, um, I think it's cute. Here come your close-up pictures, and that's it for me. Thanks. Bye-bye. <laughs>